With wildfires on the rise, drones are becoming critical tools for firefighters. I'm Beth Motter here with Greg Nichols. Greg, tell me, why are drones being seriously looked at for fire prevention and mitigation? Yeah, you know, the alarming increase in wildfires isn't going away. Um, I think that's pretty apparent to any of us in Southern California, where unfortunately there are a lot of fires and wildfire season starts increasingly early. Uh, In fact, the frequency of uh, wildfires is projected to increase by 27% by 2050 globally. Um, So that's not just North America, that's uh, Northern Eurasia and Australia, uh, which are definitely places we read about a lot more in the news now as as being extremely vulnerable to wildfire. Um, And that, of course, makes finding effective methods to respond to those wildfires really important. And innovation is kind of key to doing that. Um, So increasingly, you know, one example of this is fire departments across the globe have started to deploy first responder drones to uh, ensure personnel safety, firefighter safety, uh, as well as enhance operational effectiveness when tackling a really wide range of emergency sites, um, including industrial sites where um, emergencies and uh, environmental catastrophes often happen, places like uh, oil wells, high rises, um, and and certainly uh, uh, natural spaces where wildfires are uh, breaking out. So uh, one example, you know, in response to a recent forest fire that broke out in Athens, uh, the Greek defense minister said that the armed forces would strengthen their capabilities in fire prevention by deploying drones uh, over other vulnerable sites across the country to obtain accurate data. So drone deployment in a fire emergency really ensures the protection of personnel. Um, It helps personnel gather situational awareness really rapidly and accurately. And it's cost effective, um, especially when compared to manned systems like helicopters. Um, You know, right now, drones are replacing helicopters in terms of uh, surveillance, reconnaissance and um, kind of personnel and and mapping uh, um, applications in a big way. um, And really putting that within reach of smaller governments and institutions that may not have access uh, or or rapid access, at least to, uh, to manned helicopters. Okay, so who who is developing these drones? Yeah, there's a number of, uh, of companies that are developing drones uh, that are used in this kind of first responder capacity. I spoke with a leading drone in a box developer called Percepto, and drone in a box is kind of exactly what it sounds like. These are ruggedized uh, base stations that are essentially closed boxes that are weatherproof, and you wheel them out. They're charging stations. The drone takes off from them and then returns to them. So they're very portable units, and they're used for um, often industrial applications, but wildfires are a great application as well, increasingly. So um, uh, Percepto helped Verizon secure the first beyond visible line of sight um, uh, permission to fly drones into wildfires in the U.S., uh, and that was thanks to a landmark waiver. So the company is really keen to raise awareness uh, about the positive impact of its technology and quickly responding to natural disasters as a result of global warming um, through the deployment of drones. I actually caught up with the uh, CEO of Percepto, uh, who is named Dor Abu Hasira, uh, to learn kind of how the company is doing this. And he says drones can be used to prevent the occurrence of wildfires in a similar way that they're currently used to prevent disasters in uh, industrial sites. And that's been a common use for drones really over the last maybe five years um, as kind of inspection uh, for their inspection capabilities, um, you know, equipping these platforms with a bevy of sensors uh, and then sending them out oftentimes autonomously to uh, look over infrastructure and make sure no problems are cropping up, which they can do very efficiently. So uh, drones definitely boost the, free, uh, boost the frequency of inspection as well. And they can monitor in the same way sensitive forest areas regularly, especially during fire season, times when wildfires are more likely to occur. Um, you know, that's often done right now, the kind of um, uh, inspections of wildfire areas via manual data reviews. And that is very inefficient. It's very slow and it doesn't always catch all the um, potential failure points. Drones, though, can be equipped with uh, AI-powered solutions, just as one example, to collate data from all sources, all sensors, from cameras, um, SCADA systems. So drones can be operated remotely also, um, which really helps uh, personnel get a close look without putting uh, people in harm's way, which is you know, obviously supremely important for, uh, for such a critical job and such a dangerous job. Um, uh, yeah, so that's you know that's that's one example of how Percepto uh, and and many others are are using their technology uh, in kind of a first responder capacity to to combat wildfires associated with global warming. All right, so how capable are these drones? If you're going to send them out, you you want to know what they can do and what they can't do. 
they are shockingly capable. Um, you know, Perceptos Advanced Autonomous Drone Solution, for example, uh, was the first to pass a level five hurricane testing, uh, which uh, was wind speeds up to 155 miles an hour. Uh, that's, that's sort of remarkable that anything can stay flying in that. But uh, it, it, Percepto likes to say that their system is the most rugged drone in a box system on the market. Um, obviously, they have a uh, dog in this fight, so take that for what it's worth. But they are known for having an incredibly effective drone in the box uh, system. Um, you know, the, the uh, Percepto base allows their Sparrow drone uh, to safely charge outdoors uh, in extreme weather, which is another advantage to these drone in a box systems. And the drone itself is highly ruggedized. Um, it can it can fly in things like sand, um, intense heat, rain, wind, snow. Um, so it's kind of like you know the postman in that sense. Nothing's going to keep it uh, out of the sky or uh, or working hard. Um, yeah. So uh, you know the 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 real innovation there is the kind of ruggedized nature of the drones, um, as well as the sensors that they're currently able to carry uh, and carry for a longer time thanks to advanced battery technology that gives them longer um, uh, you know, time of flight, uh, which is critical when you're talking about doing reconnaissance over really vast areas in the case of forest fires. And my last question, and this is, uh, it's almost always asked when we talk about drones, what about regulation? Has it caught up to the technology in the case of wildfires? Yeah, yes and no. Um, you know, we're still talking about temporary waivers in many cases to fly beyond line of sight. Although, you know, the FAA, to its credit, has been very accommodating in cases of disaster. So last year, the FAA granted uh, Skyward, which is a Verizon company, a temporary waiver uh, that allowed the company to fly um, pilots to drone. Um, uh, sorry, they allowed company pilots to fly the drone, the Percepto Sparrow drone. Uh, from their own homes, actually, to inspect critical communications infrastructure near the Big Hollow wildfire in Washington. Um, so, you know, those waivers, they're a stopgap. They're not uh, ideal. They often grant like 24 hours of operations. Uh, but for the time being, at least, that is extremely helpful. The hope in the industry, of course, is that there is some kind of regulatory framework that is more accommodating and uh, more predictable so that it doesn't have to be kind of a mad dash to get permission to send drones in, uh, you, you know, if you're an agency charged with, uh, with combating wildfire in uh, cases of emergency. All right, Greg, thank you so much for breaking this down. Like we said, wildfires are on the rise and anything that can help combat them is absolutely necessary. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stick with ZDNet for all things tech. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you.